In this video, I'm walking you through and I will work together with you on a business analysis case study. This case study is a very good representation of a possible day-to-day -day task for a business analyst. So what is the case study I have prepared for today? It's the following. Company A is growing rapidly and hence increases the amount of employees. As the amount of employees is increasing, the company has to take access management more into consideration because it becomes harder to keep an overview on who holds access rights for which application. As the company only had five employees, this was an easy task, but it isn't anymore. Company A has the need to keep this overview to prevent fraud and other possibilities. A group of business analysts gathered this need and came up with a solution that company A needs a software which allows company A to let employees request access rights for an application and also to get the request reviewed by their line manager. This process should be digitalized. You are hired to come up with a first prototype. This here is the whole case study and this is a possible task which might happen for you on a day-to-day -day basis as a business analyst. Let's walk through this case study together and work on this. The very first thing we need to do is to schedule a requirements workshop or an interview to really get more understanding of this topic. How to do requirements workshops and interviews, that's a topic I have created also some content already here on YouTube. I will link it down below, so also make sure to watch these two. But let's say you schedule this meeting and the outcome of this meeting are the following requirements. So employees have to be able to request access to for an application and line managers, so second users, have to be able to review the request. And possible outcomes of such a review could be either an approval, a rejection, or a rework. I think approval and rejection is clear. Rework could mean that if the line manager says, okay, do a rework, so it goes back to the person who requested it in the first place, just to adjust some information. Then the next requirement could be that the automated download of the approved application and a working role concept can be ignored for the prototype. So our prototype will be a one user only executable software. So one user is doing everything. So with all these information requirements, we can model this business process, this workflow with the BPMN standard. If you don't know, BPMN stands for business process model annotation, and it's a worldwide accepted standard to model business processes and workflows. Also in order to model it and later to execute the business process, that's the main value of this video. I have a tool here prepared, which allows us to do both model the flow and execute it. So we can really see how would it look like in a production kind of environment in reality for a real user. So the first thing I'm doing is I have to create this process, right? So I'm quickly in this application creating this process. Let's name it for now, access management. That's okay for now. That's the start of the process. So every item you see here basically is part of the BPMN standard, right? So these two circles that you can see, the first one here is a start event. So the process is starting and the thick one is the end event, the process is ending. And like I've said, the first step in this process is to access, to request the access, right? So that's an activity in BPMN. So an activity looks like this, that's a task, something we have to do, and we can call it request access. So the employee is requesting access. The next thing is this request could be a form, right? So the user is entering some information here. So we can create a form. Let's say request access form, something like this. There was an error because I think I've created this form before, but that doesn't, doesn't matter. So that's now the option to create a form. So a mask for the user, a user interface. And if you think about it, okay, what is important for the user to enter? Which information are critical? Let's say one critical thing is for sure the application, right? So we want to select an application. So this tool here is allowing me to put in, to drag and drop some, some options, how the form looks like. And this one is a select single dropdown. So basically that's a dropdown of applications and I name it just application. And what I can do is I can predefine values. So let's say we have three applications to choose from. The first one could be, let's say, PowerPoint. So this one, then we can have Excel. And let's say we can have Word. These three applications for now are okay. The user can select from. Another important information could be a justification, right? So if you are requesting access for an application, you want to justify why that is. So we have some text fields like here, the multi-line text. I will just drag and drop that in. 
and call it justification. Now you can see in these fields with these brackets, I zoom in, bracket, bracket, a word bracket, bracket. That's basically the variable name of this field. We will need this variable name later to reference in the flow um, to this variable. And what we could also do is say, okay, these two fields are required. So we don't want to let the user complete this step without also filling some information in here. And maybe another thing we could do, we could maybe have a welcome information on top. So that's a text display. And maybe we just, we just call it something like welcome initiator. So now these two brackets initiator is again a variable and initiator, initiator is basically the variable for the, for the user who started the process, right? So we're just welcoming the person, whoever is that. Okay, so that's the first form I would say. Um, so let's save it and publish it and see in production how it would look like. So I click here on publish. Quickly restarting the application. Okay, creating something new. So here you can see the access management process. That's the one we just created. Let me click on this, click on continue. And you can see the first task, request access. There is an S missing. And if I click on it, that's the form we have specified, right? So welcome team two. Here you can see my current user is called team two. That's why team two is here. And I can select an application. Cool. So I can select Excel, for example. And I can also, or have to provide a justification. And you see at the top, top right, this complete button, only if I fill in something here, it gets activated. So I can click on complete and the flow is done. Here in the history, you can see how the flow did look like. It was basically just one user task. That's the reason why it's done. So let's jump back to the flow. So now we have the chance to request access or create an access request. That's cool. The next thing is, or the requirement was, an other person has to be able to review this request and decide if it gets approved or not. So we have a second user task. And we could call it something like review request, right? And also here again, the user have to input some information so we can create a form. Let's say review request forms. Click on create. And here again, we can specify a form. So what is important for the reviewer? I would say to see the same information the requester entered is key for the reviewer. So we can drag in again a single drop, select single, that's the drop down. Application the re employee requested, something like this. And now you see here is a different variable name than before. I can show you here, it was application. And as we want to refer to the value here, we have to call it the same. So what I would do here in the value is just put in application and that's it. So we are referring to the already having value. Then the justification we also want to put in here. That was a multi-text, call it justification, the employee entered. And also here we want to just call it justification. Cool. That's awesome. Then what we also want to do, maybe again, showing some text, like welcoming the user. So we could also call it something like dear. Then again, these variables. This, what I'm entering here is super dependent on your application that you're using, right? So here it's current user that display name for me to display the name of the current user. That's what I want to do. And maybe what I also want to do is I want, I want to say something like, um, there is a request from and call it initiator just to show, show from who the request is coming from. Um, yep. That's also fine. We have the application, we have the justification. What you could do is we could enable it, meaning we cannot enter. It's only read only. I think this makes sense to keep these fields read only as the reviewer doesn't want to change it just to review it. And yeah, let's also save this and deploy it. 
so we can have a look in reality how this looks like. Just refreshing the page, creating access management. Okay, let's say we're requesting Word. I complete this. And now you can see the second task got created, review request. And it says to me, dear team two, the thing is, that's the current user that I'm logged in. There is a request from team two, and this was the initiator. And the application which was which was requested is Word. I cannot end, change it, that's great. And a justification the employee entered was this one here. So we, we were able to see what the first user entered, that's great. And fine, so that's the flow for now. As the requirements also said, we have to review it. And based on the review, we can either approve it, reject it, or rework. And this is basically a decision. And these decisions get mostly uh, represented by a gateway. This gateway is basically a route which helps us, helps us to decide which way to go from here. Right? So basically, you can imagine in code an if condition, an if condition to decide where to go. And as we've said, if it's approved, we have a different one than if it's rejected. So what we could do also here in this review request form, we can specify the outcome. So for example, we have here the outcomes field and outcomes could be like, you could, you could imagine buttons, right? So you have a form, enter information, and then you have three buttons like approve, reject, and rework. Three buttons to decide what the next step is. So here in outcomes, we can enter these. So let's say, I'm just adding three items, very brief. And the third one is a rework, something like this. And we click OK. So we have three possible outcomes of this. Let's save it again. And let me show you how this would look like. Access management. Again, we put in some weird information. And now you can see here are three outcomes, approve, reject, and rework. So right now, all these three things do the same. So, so there's no logic, but we can now implement this logic. So here in this gateway, let's click on the sequence here. And here on the right side, it asks me for a condition. So what is the condition, the if condition? And like I've said, if the outcome of the review request form, right? This is this one here equals approve. So now you can see the options, right? If the outcome is the clicking of approve button, then we just want to say request approved. So that's the happy case, right? There can also be different variations. So we can say, okay, mm, do it something like this. So it looks pretty good. Okay. So in this flow, what is the condition here? We could say again, so review request forms equals now reject, right? So that's the second option. Then we can say request rejected. We can also name these sequences so it looks a bit more better, like rejected, approved. We can also name this gateway like outcome of review. Let me make that a bit more beautiful like this. And there is a third option, the rework. And the rework could basically just be here, an arrow going back to the request access task. So the thing we need to do is, we also have to put a condition here. But as you can see, there is a default flow variation. This means if approved and rejected both are not true, then we go with the default flow, meaning rework. And that's the business process here. Let's also again save it and publish it and see how it would look like in reality. I'm again opening our access management application. So let's say we are requesting PowerPoint. I like PowerPoint. We complete this task. Now we have to review it. And we can see the employee is requesting PowerPoint because he or she likes it. Let's say that's not good enough for us. We can either rework or reject it. Let's say for now we just want to reject it. That's okay. As you can see, the whole business process is done. And here in the history, you can see here marked in blue, we had the request access, we reviewed it, 
and we went to this end event. So basically it's rejected. Now let's also test the other paths. So we could say, okay, this time I'm requesting Excel. I need Excel for my work and send this request. Now we can review it and then we say, okay, that's fine for me. Let's approve it. And here in the history, again, we can see it's now the happy path. It is approved. The very last, last option could be the rework. So let's go to the point where we can rework it. So we say here, click on rework. And now you see the request access task is back, right? So if I click on it again, I can see what I've entered in the beginning. I've entered Microsoft Excel and this justification, better justification. Let's do it like this. We can complete it. Again, we have the review, but first let's have a look in the history. And here we can see we went through this gateway and we went back. So basically in these last couple of minutes, what you have seen is based on the case study and the requirements, we have built a prototype, a first prototype, which is matching the requirements, modeled in BPMN, so a standard, and executed here in a tool, which is called in this case Flowable, um, to execute BPMN in real time for a real project. I hope you like this case study. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.